So on my Discord, someone made a comment of like, I should just try building my own state management library. Um, I kind of laughed it off at first, and then I realized maybe I should try doing something simple just so I can further learn more about React and how like some of these state management libraries are created behind the scenes. So that is what I kind of did, and I want to share with you my approach to my basic state man management library. So let me show you. I have page A and page B, and they're both sharing state. Um, also, I'm using Next.js, so like these pages are on different... Uh, routes. But notice if I go to page B, there is a button. I can click on it and that increments a counter. And then if I were to go back and go to page A, notice that it shows the same count. So both of these components, like they're on completely different routes, they both share and persist the same global state, right? The same application state. And you can kind of extend this to do whatever you want. If you end up like logging in and have authentication, you could have like a user object stored in your global state. So how exactly did I do this? Because I didn't do, I didn't use Redux, I didn't use Sustan, Zustan or whatever, and I didn't use context. So how do I actually implement my own custom little state library helper? Um, let me just kind of kind of show you that. So the first thing I did, she let me open some files and try to figure out what's relevant to kind of talk about. So over here we have the store file, right? So this is kind of like where I figured you can define your top level global state and kind of define whatever objects and properties you might need. So in this case, we're not using, using this uh, user property, but we are using this count. And that's why when the app kind of loaded, the count was 11. And I can kind of change this and click save. And I believe my UI will kind of refresh and that count will be reflected there, right? Um, and I did take some inspiration from some other state management libraries like Zustan and, uh, you know, the slices from Redux uh, toolkit and then Cerebral.js. Uh, there's some kind of stuff there, but it's really basic. What this does is you call this function and this is going to return you a custom hook that you can start using in all of your components, right? So we create a store here. This is like the initial state of your store and that gives you back a custom hook that you can use. So I'm exporting that and if I go to like page A and kind of show you how that's being done. So let's go to page A here. So again, we're importing that custom hook here, which allows us to basically call it with a key. And this key kind of represents the actual, like, um, which property you want to kind of bind to. So in this case, it could be count. You could change this to user if you wanted to. I wanted to maybe take it a step further and, like, allow you to do uh, user.name if I wanted to. Um, but I didn't want to get too out of hand, too complicated. I want to keep it kind of simple. So that's kind of how it works. We're importing this custom hook, which I'm using in this page A. And it follows a very similar approach to just like the use state hook where I can actually like um, hit the setter here, so like set count. And I can invoke this if I wanted to to change that global state variable. So that's about all the how it works with the pages. Um, they just import state. Um, this one is a button and when I click it, it actually increments that count by one. So how does this custom hook work, right? That's, this is where like where the magic kind of happens. So if I look at the use store hook I created, I want to kind of share with you what's going on here. So we have um, <clears throat> that function create store and that takes in an initial state. So that's kind of what we're doing on the store page. We're calling the create store and pass it in an initial state. And all that's doing is kind of keeping track of these, this object here as a parameter because of the way JavaScript scoping works like this will be around. And this is a, um, a function that returns a function. So it's kind of like a closure. I guess it is a closure. And I have some internal things kind of set up. Like I have this event emitter set up, which I'll explain in a second. But this function returns that custom hook. This is the custom hook here, which takes in a key. And what I'm doing here is basically whenever you call this hook, you get back a value here which is just going to be the key reference to that object. And then you also get a setter function. So you can call this to kind of change the state dynamically. And that's kind of what we're doing on page B. We're calling that setter here to update this, the count variable by one. Um, now the, the magic, the, the way this really um, was able to be achieved is I had to bring in some type of event emitter, right? So you have all of these different components or states being used in all these different components and pages. And when you update one, you somehow have to notify all the others that they need to also re-render, right? If you don't do that, then you don't see the actual count being displayed on your UI. So what I had to kind of do was when you're working with the browser, there's a way to kind of set up like a, a pub sub. 
Um, if you don't know what PubSub is, basically an object that you can publish events to, and then other things in your code base can subscribe to those events and get the payload that you're sending. So in this case, I kind of created my own event emitter that has the emit function. You pass it a key, and that's going to kind of notify everything else that's attached to this event emitter that, hey, you, this event has been published, so you need to re-render. Okay, so how I kind of use that is down here, I use the use memo so that I kind of bind a new event listener to that event emitter once. And now this, whatever component is using this store, <clears throat> or I guess whatever component is using this custom hook here, is going to kind of listen for whenever someone else decides to change that, that value of that key, okay? So all I'm doing is setting count by one and modding it by the max safe integer, which is just gonna force React to kind of re-render that component and then also like, if you imagine you have three different components all using the same key, then all three of them are going to re-render at the same time. Um, yeah, so whenever someone tries to change the value of that store, you basically just emit that key. That's gonna trigger every other component on your app to also re-render and you'll get the latest value displayed in your UI. That's kind of all I had to do to set up a global state management. You don't need to bring in something crazy to get this going. Um, although there's probably bugs with this, like what happens when a component unmounts? Maybe you need to somehow figure out how to unlisten to these event emitters, but honestly, it's probably not an issue. Um, this, this would probably work in a large scale application just fine. Um, so yeah, let me just kind of show you real quick. If I go to page uh, B, uh, what I could do is, what do I want to show you? So like, I guess what I'm trying to show you is if I have different components, they can all use like the same thing. So let's just go ahead and put like a page A here. And I'm just kind of hacking at this to get it to kind of show you what's going on. I think I might need to import this. So let's just try this. Again, we have like a bunch of different components that are all bound to that same state variable. So if I go back to the index, we should see what's complaining about. Oh, this is because I changed this to user. I'm a dummy. So let me change the back to count. Again, like this isn't the perfect solution. Um, I could probably add some better error handling. I know I just released a video about crappy error handling, but what I'm trying to show here is like all these things are basically bound to the same state variable. So if I just were to kind of import that same component multiple times and just show you what happens if I were to like change stuff, notice that like in, in these buttons, they're all bound to that same JavaScript variable under the hood. So if I increment one, they all just update. Right? That's the point of a, a state management library is that you can share state amongst all these different components. So yeah, that's kind of how I set it up. Again, there's probably a lot of issues under hood of like why this is you know not the best solution to use. But honestly, like <laughs> the reason I was challenging myself with this is I just wanted to kind of understand like how you can kind of create this just using the things that are provided from React out of the box. And also like I started looking into the Zustan library and reading through their code. And it just seems like super complex. Like, I, I mean, it's in TypeScript and I'll be honest with you, all my TypeScript skills, my TypeScript skills kind of suck. So reading through all this, this is kind of overwhelming. Like I'll make another video about TypeScript. I just hate TypeScript. It's just too much garbage. But I tried to just read through that, didn't really understand it. So I'm like, screw it. I'm just gonna write, write my own to try to like implement a state management library that does the exact same thing. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, like, I feel like I could actually create a large scale application, not have to worry about bringing in context, not have to worry about bringing in all these other third party libraries that do state in a way that I think is just overly complicated. State should be it should be super simple, right? It should just be a, the ability to store something with a key somewhere and then retrieve that and update it in other components. It's as simple as that. But yeah, let me know what you think. Leave a comment below, give me a like. Have a good day and happy coding.